This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi everyone, it's Rebecca and Tara, and we are here to discuss the short list and the contenders for Canada Reads 2023 and the five defenders who were announced to today as well. And first I want to ask you, Tara, uh, how many of these of the five did you predict? I got two out of the five. So I'm pretty happy with that. I, that's better than last year. I think last year I got one. Oh, okay. Maybe. Maybe I got none. I don't think I got more than one last year. So I'm taking this as a win. Okay. Yeah. Well, I kind of, because we kind of cheated and took two, we had two titles. I mean, yeah. we had, we did six titles, but I had two. I had Ducks and Greenwood. Yeah, those were mine. Yeah, and I either said Moon of the Crest of Snow or Station Eleven, one or, one or the other, but I went with the Moon, and of course Station Eleven is the one that got it. So uh, I'm going to give you Station Eleven. You will, okay. Yep. Well, thank you. Yep. I give it to you. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So, with regard to, if we want to start with maybe talking about the titles first, and then talk about the defenders, uh, I'll let you kind of kick it off because you've actually read a few of these books. Yeah, I have uh, read three of the five, so I'm pretty excited by that because um, that means I can still keep reading my other stuff a little bit too instead of getting like, it's a <laughs> I'm little jealous. selfish. It's a little selfish, but I'm like, bonus. And I think even Station Eleven I've read twice, so I'm definitely not rereading it. And yeah. Greenwood I loved, but I'm not going to reread it because it's like a 500-page book. Shut up. It oh, yeah, is. no, it's a big Aww. book. It's a big book. Sorry. Oh, Ugh, gosh. Sorry to okay. The news. But it's yeah. a great book. Yeah. But that's yeah. why I'm like, I, I, I'm not going to spur the moment reread it. I could see it being a book that I might reread in the future, mm -hmm. but not when there's a time constraint oh, yeah. on me. You know what I mean? And Mexican Gothic also loved and would like to reread some time, but I have other books of hers that I want to reread first or read oh. sorry before I would reread Mexican Gothic so oh, okay yeah yeah so I just have ducks and hotline to read wow yeah you're lucky so I'm dog kicking you. your ass Rebecca you're totally kicking God. my ass because I've only read <laughs> I've only read station 11 but I am currently yep. reading ducks I just mm -hmm. got it today from my public nice. library yeah and I, I ordered Greenwood and Mexican okay. Gothic and those will be here probably within the week. I'll have them. Nice. And then Hotline, I had to reach out to my local Canadian, the closest one to me, local independent Canadian bookstore in Sarnia, the bookkeeper. And they, I said, could you please hold a copy for me? Because I don't want to drive all the way to Can you know, Sarnia, <laughs> Canada, <laughs> go across the bridge. And then have you say, uh oh, the books are all sold out. So they said yeah. they, they're they holding a copy for me. So thank you. Thank you nice. to the bookkeeper. Nice. And yeah, so I am, I will have, have access to all five, which is great. Excellent. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask you, I'm excited when you start, when you get your Greenwood, copy of Greenwood, mm -hmm. I would like to know if it's the, is it the American edition then that you think you've ordered that you will receive? Is there an American versus a Canadian? Yeah, I think so. Like in, okay. in terms of cover. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Because the Canadian one is a beautiful book. Like it's a beautiful cover and uh, even the edges, the page edges, it's a very beautiful book. And then yesterday uh, when I was like messing around with our new website and I was looking at bookshop.org, which is American, right? That website, they yes. have Greenwood on it, but it was an American, the American cover. And it is ugly. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I was, I, I, it's really funny how often I see the American cover of a Canadian book or even, or any book. And I'm like, Oh, that's disappointing compared to the, another country. cover. I think what they, I think what they do to save money in the U S I think they go to clip art and then they make oh, clip art. Cover. Maybe no, Cause I'm just, I, no I saw it. I'm like, Oh, what a shame. Cause it's a, the Canadian cover is so beautiful. And this one was just, look, not, not nice. Okay. That's sorry. That yeah. was a little off topic, but let me know when you get it. Send me a picture. 
I don't think it's so off topic in the sense that it's great that we are getting these books in the mm-hmm. U.S. from Canadian authors. That's, I mean, that speaks yeah. volumes for both the U.S. and Canadian publishing and stuff. But it's sort of like, yeah, that does happen. We get the we get the ugliest covers. I'm not kidding you. you? When I, I know because then I think, well, I want to buy this book, but then I don't want to buy the American version because I don't like yeah. the cover as much. So yeah, it is yeah. kind of true. Yeah. Now, so we've read all five, which I mean, we have all five now. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you mm-hmm. about, because at the end, we will predict who we think will win, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we actually discuss that up front, but I do like no, to do didn't, that. But I just had a yeah. thought when I okay, was going cool. through them. Okay. Okay. And I do want to talk about the five contenders because I actually knew one of them because a few months ago, for some reason, mm-hmm. I don't know why I might've seen him on TikTok or YouTube or something, but oh, Gertie yeah. Pander, I saw him and thought, oh, wow, this guy was really pretty incredible. And I didn't recognize him by name, but as soon as I looked him up, I thought, okay, I do know who he is, yeah. but I'm afraid I did not know the others. So how about you? Okay. I uh, knew who Matea Roach was, so the Jeopardy champion. Mm-hmm. I was familiar with her. And I knew Michael Gray Eyes, the actor from Rutherford Falls. Is I know him from Rutherford Falls, and he was one of my favorite characters in the oh, show, cool. actually. Yeah. So the other three I was not, but I have since watched a video of Gurdeep's, and he is lovely. And his dancing did make me very happy. Yeah. Watching it. Yep. And I did watch a little uh, TikTok video for Tasnam Gidi. As okay. well, and uh, I'm actually really excited about this group of panelists mm-hmm. because uh, it's so Canadian in that they're not really celebrities, but they kind of are in their own fields. Like yeah. even uh, Taz Neem, who is on TikTok, she's got a huge following on Book Talk. Yeah, But I hadn't heard of, I, I'm not on TikTok, so I hadn't heard of her. So I love that these people are all like really celebrities in their own little niches. And now yeah. we're also being introduced to them in addition to the books across yeah. the country. And it's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm a huge TikTok fan. Like I, I'm not going to lie. If I'm not reading, I'm on TikTok. And okay. I don't do anything because I have no interest in, I have no talent or you know, creativity to create videos, but I am addicted to watching them. And I have Mm -hmm. too many people I follow that I, every day I have to check in. (laughs) Now I don't do book talk though, because it's just another, it just feels like another layer. It's enough for me on, on Instagram to try to keep up with things. And then, so book talk, I follow a couple of people, but they're not like big names. They're just like small accounts that I just like their content Mm-hmm. And then that's all I do. So with uh, her, yeah, I did look it up and she does have an incredible following. So yeah. I think that will be pretty exciting. That uh, is. It's, yeah. it's, there, um, it's a group of panelists that I wasn't really expecting anyone. Like the actors, you always expect a couple of actors. Mm-hmm. But the other three panelists, I was like, oh, a Jeopardy champion, a dancer and a TikToker. I'm like, like that's super crazy. And I love it. Yeah, and I think it's going to be an incredible program this year. I mean, yeah. I think when I listen to, I just listen to the one minute, I listen to Q and I listen mm-hmm. to like the one minute intros that they did. And I just thought, yeah, I think this is going to be an incredible program this year. And I am looking forward to it. Yeah. And so I think that means we should say who we think is going to win because yeah. this is our prediction. We have to, you know, we have to make our, pre- and I have a feeling you and I will not agree, which will make it kind of fun. Probably not. Yeah. I would, I also have another question for you. Sure. Which we can, well, but but we can leave, leave that for after or do we, no, can I ask it now before we make our predictions actually? Sure. Is there any book on this list that you wish wasn't there? Is that like a terrible question to ask? Or are you surprised that it's there? Are you kind of like, I was not expecting that one. No, I, it's like everybody said. I think every book on here just was a, an amazing selection. I think they did a super job picking mm-hmm. diverse titles. I'll say two things about what I, how I feel about it. Number one, okay. I'm still disappointed that we don't, as far as I know, have Asian representation. So I'm kind of saying, 
Come on, Canada Reads. We need some Asian representation here. Mm-hmm. We just haven't had enough. And I mean, I do realize that we had, you know, a couple of titles by Simu Liu and uh, Jamie Chow yeah. Yun Li Liu. But still, I mean, I don't know. Have we had any Asian defenders? And maybe we have. And again, I've only been at this for about five or six mm-hmm. years. Okay. And number two, I'm not happy that I have to read Mexican Gothic in a way because I don't know how graphic it will be as a horror book. And that part, I just, I mean, that's not my genre. I don't really, yeah. I don't really enjoy it. Yeah. So how about you? No, I think I'm pretty happy with the list. I was a little surprised to see Station Eleven there only because I feel like it's gotten its due. Yeah. Like, you know, when it first came out, it was immensely popular. It had another like resurgence when at the beginning of the pandemic. And then it was it's been made into a TV show. So I kind of feel like it had its time. Like it's had lots of limelight. And I feel like a lot of people have read it already. So, yeah. I agree with you on that. First of all, there's a TV show. Is it like a cable yes. thing? Like a uh, Netflix yes, or something? Yes, I don't know what network it's on. Not Netflix. Oh. It's, I think it's like HBO or Hulu or something like that. Yeah. I don't really watch TV much, so I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, what else? Did you have another thing about your titles, that, the titles on the list that you wanted to mention? Like things that uh, you're happy about or not happy about? No, I'm, like I said, I'm really happy with the list. Just surprised by Station Eleven. I am kind of bummed that a couple of my predictions didn't make it. I'll be honest. Like I was really hoping for a blood scion or, oh shoot, I can't remember the name. I have it right here. Oh yeah, all the seas of the world. So I am kind of bummed that that didn't make it. I was really, but I knew that was a long stretch. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bummed by that. But other than that, I'm actually really excited for the list and the panelist. Okay, so let's play this. Yeah. If we both agree that Station Eleven has had its day in court in terms of just great reception, great publicity, et cetera, if we yeah. could take Station Eleven off the list, what one yeah. title would you bring onto the list? Oh, it would have to. I'm okay. I'm going to flick back to my shortlist predictions because I just happen to have them here. Um, I'm thinking. Oh, oh. Hmm. Okay, it would be between All the Seas of the World or Finding Edward, because I was actually really surprised that Finding Edward wasn't here, I'll be honest. Okay, you have to pick one. Sometimes have we to have pick to one. pick okay. one, because we're, we're replacing one title, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Okay, that's true. I'm going to go with All the Seas of the World then. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it's funny, because I would go Finding Edward. I was very, when oh. I went back over the list and saw it, I was like, damn it. That's yeah. the one I really want. I mean, I can still yeah. obviously read the book, but that's the one I wanted on the list. Yeah. And so obviously I will read it, but. It's the one that I'm really surprised isn't on the list from my predictions. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I actually agree. Yeah. And, and actually I'm just looking and I do not have access to it here in Michigan. So that one I would have to purchase. So I'll have to see if my library in Sarnia, I mean, my uh, bookstore in Sarnia might carry that one as well. Okay. So now I think it's time for us to make our prediction. And you only get one yes, okay. title nope. to win. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Trying to cut off my cheating before I even start. I know. Well, it's, I'm, I mean, I've been cheating too along with you. So, but no, we have I'm to terrible pick at one, it. one title. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, you want to go first? No, I'll let you go first. Okay. I'm actually, this is just like, because I didn't have a lot of time to dive into this and think about it but when I was going through it just before we started recording this one kind of stuck out at me and I'm going to go with Hotline by Dimitri Nasrallah defended by oh. Gurdip Pander I really am wow yep. yep even though I hate the cover I'd like to put that out there I really hate the cover of this book totally agree I kind of feel like this might be the book I'm just reading through the description I haven't read it yet but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my prediction. Okay, what about you? Well, let me ask you now: Is that okay. because is it the is it the subject of the book? Is it the defender? Do you feel it's a combination of the two? Like, what's grabbing you? Yep, I think it's a combination of the two. I think the subject sounds really good. So even though it's set in the eighties, 
I think it will have uh, be relevant to 2023, mm-hmm. to what we're going into now, what for for the immigrant condition, poverty, racism. I think it will all be extremely relevant to what's going on in the world now. Which is sad. You would have hoped that we would have changed in 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, that. And maybe also I'm being influenced at the same time. So I went through to get ready for this tonight. I went through the uh, CBC books. They have a page in which they listed all of the books and the defenders. And you could click on the link and get a little more information about the book and the defender. Mm -hmm. And so in that, they had a video of Gurdip dancing. Mm -hmm. And it was so bloody delightful. And it made me so happy just to watch it. I'm like, I feel like, yeah, I think he's going to bring a lot to the debate and to, to defend this book. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I was just influenced by the dance, though, because it was amazing. So I also mm. did, I didn't even look at the CBC's website yet. I listened to Q today mm-hmm. and heard the one minute, each of the defenders made a one yes. minute pitch for their book. That's and a good idea. And I 100%, and now I did tell my mother they often try to take the strongest defender and book out yes, of the competition. They do. So I said, it may be that mine gets voted off first, but I believe this is the book that all candidates should read. And in terms of the theme, which is to, what is it? Something about perspective. Uh, shift your perspective, yes. I think. Yeah. And I think that, oh, I hold on. I have to look up the person's name. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know their names of the defenders. Okay. I think Mateo Roach did the most stunning one minute presentation. She reminded me of Mark Tewksbury in Mm. terms of preparation, because when she named all of the things about the book and what it discusses and how it could shift, she didn't say how it could shift the perspective, but the fact that those perspectives needed to be shifted in a way. Yeah. I was like, man, what a strong one minute. And I don't watch Jeopardy really, but she was, I know that to win that many times, you have to be, you know, really competitive. Absolutely. Yeah. She's coming loaded for bear. And yeah. I do think that ducks, I think it's the right time for a graphic novel of this seriousness and this weighty issue, these weighty mm-hmm. issues, I should say, I think it's time for a graphic novel to win. Cause I don't think a graphic novel has won to date. I don't think so either. Yeah. So I am championing mm-hmm. ducks. by yep. Kate Beaton. Yep. And I'm really excited. As I said, I'm reading it. I'm only about 50 pages in, but I just am really excited about this book. And, and yeah, that's a good one. And the others as well. I mean, obviously, they're yeah. all they're all great. So yeah. that's that's a good prediction. Yeah, that's yeah. I think you might be right. No, well, I think good. yours is a bold choice because Hotline, really. Again, I mean, I'm not trying to say that the U.S. matters, but. All those books are available in the U.S. except we cannot get Hotline. And when I and I tried to even get it through my local bookstore, couldn't get it because they said it's not being it's not shippable in the U.S. And then when I tried to go into my Amazon Canada account, they went, "No, your address is not valid." <laughs> so because it, they won't even ship it here. So that's my only thing is that the other ones maybe had a bigger reputation. But let's face it, mm-hmm. it's also about how the defender defends the yeah. book. And I don't think any of us necessarily would have picked Christian Allaire to win. Exactly. After the first day when we saw him, because he was such a, he was such a subtle, powerful defender. Yep. Okay. It's exciting. I know it is exciting. It is really exciting. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that we will end here and uh, yeah, let's just get to reading, I guess is the whole point now, huh? Yeah. And I was going to say, if anyone would like to share their predictions, please a DM on Instagram, like through social media. We would love to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we want to know, is this going to, is, is there like a really a front runner or I think these are all really strong titles. So is there a front runner or is it going to be like a split vote across the board? It'll be interesting. Mm. Yep. Okay. Let the games begin. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, 
keep reading.